my name is Adi Rosenberg. Uh, this session is going to talk about a new technology that VideoFlow is debuting. This is the first time we, we discuss this technology in public. Uh, this is a new technology addressing uh, uh, satellite interferences and recovery of satellite uh, packet loss or any artifacts that are to do with the satellite using an IP network as the backbone. To those who don't know me, my name is Adi Rosenberg. I'm the CTO and co-founder of VideoFlow. With me is Paul Atwell that I will allow him to present himself. Paul, please present yourself. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Paul Atwell, president of Media Transport Solutions, and I'm a 24-year participant in the Video Services Forum. Um, I'm really glad we're meeting today, a year after our last in-person event, and I look forward to VidTrans in person next year. Right. So let's start, let's begin. Uh, I will start with a short introduction about VideoFlow to those who don't know us. So uh, VideoFlow has been around since 2010. We have a bunch of uh, people that uh, are coming from the broadcast NIT. And we have an R&D group that is made of these people that know and understand broadcast NIT problems. We are a major technology contributor to the VSF and the RIST. Uh, we contributed uh, one of our patents as an IPR to the RIST uh, the technical specification. Uh, we have pa five patents in advanced IP delivery and three new pending patents in hybrid satellite, which is the topic of this discussion. So Adi, what are the benefit of having IT people and broadcast people working together? <laughs> Oh, Paul, uh, the good thing is that we look at, we talk with the customers, we look uh, at the market and we try to find a solution. That is why we consider ourselves as innovation known stop. We predict the customer needs years ahead of uh, them need, seeing the need for that. Uh, we had just uh, had that uh, presentation from Amazon and uh, the question that I raised was, why not to use RIST and the load share capabilities of RIST in their facility? That is some of the things that VideoFlow developed over the years, also contributed to the RIST. And this is something that I believe the industry should do. So just to focus you guys on uh, where we are, we have innovation in the field of uh, transport stream over IP digitering, uh, sophisticated error recovery and bonding, we have a RIST demo uh, running in the RIST forum booth that you can see at uh, far, uh, you can see a video of a test that we are doing showing that. Uh, in the uh, last years, I was talking about adaptive streaming and presenting that to the v in the VTrans, latest VTranses and SEMTI meetings. We have an optimized multicast error recovery technology. This year, we are focusing on hybrid SAT and Next is going to be Mac and Kubernetes. So what are the challenges Too that late. satellite services are <laughs> facing? Well, uh, as you know, it's a very good question because we are dealing uh, with that on a daily basis. So let's go and uh, summarize that. Many ground stations today have a lot of problems. The first one in the state is the 5G and C-band coexistence. Uh, we have the C-band migration and the introduction of 5G, but what we hear is that uh, cell towers are erected without any uh, notification, and then you, uh, you as an air station, you don't know what's going on in your area. What the industry does tell you to do is go and, sele and select filters. There's a wide variety of uh, vendors that provide filters, but you have to test and qualify them. Then there is the eight, uh, long, uh, long uh, thing called adjacent satellite interference, uh, aka ASI, which uh, I will touch base later on. And there are also uncontrolled radio sources coming from military radars, FM transmitters, and even jammers. To those who are not uh, from the States, uh, they probably don't know that weather conditions and such ports are increasing on a yearly basis. Uh, this is something that should be uh, avoided, but, but we can, that's something that will take, uh, be, be taken care of maybe tens of years behind the, after our death. Next is the aging equipment. 
a lot of aging equipment is out there and we have to replace that and it might not be that suitable for and is interference uh, intolerant. And last and very important, and I touched base on that last year is training and education. This is something which is very missing in our industry. We need to train and educate our the newcomers to this industry. A lot of them are coming fresh off university and don't understand the difference between pixel, why do you use UDP and streaming and higher bit rates and so on. So Adi, can you elaborate? Oh, yeah. So let's see this next slide. So video, as uh, Evan said, is very sensitive, uh, like no other traffic type. We don't want to provide uh, uh, such a service to our clients. Nobody wants to wait uh, to deliver a service that uh, has this video to their clients. Now, going uh, for the 5G interferences, this is a statement that I will not read. I will spare you the reading, but basically it talks about that uh, not only 5G, but also 4G can cause an interference and the air station need to be prepared and uh, have a backup, either a backup site or a backup plan. Next, let's, let's talk about solar flares and sunspots. So to those who don't know and are not in the satellite business or don't have an IE uh, degree, sunspot activity is something that is happening. We are at a solar minimum. Uh, to those who don't know that, they can go and talk with uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Phil Wildum. He's monitoring the sun and the sunspot activities, <laughs> and it is at a solar minimum and it is increasing. Uh, here is a report from NASA from last year. But this year there was another, there is another report stating that uh, events will happen this month. To those who don't believe NASA, they only just put a, a something on the Mars. Uh, these are our friends from RCN. And they are announcing publicly on their site, just like last year, about outages that might happen. Outage means people will suffer for interference, interferences and artifacts in their video. Next is the 5G and C-band. Well, to those who don't know and have not been following the news, uh, we have a uh, 5G and C-band share the same frequency range. This is why the satellite operators were asked to move, to leave that field and leave uh, some of their frequencies to allow the 5G to prosper in the States and worldwide. Uh, on your right, you can see a visual graphics uh, that shows that uh, parallel, coex that parallel uh, use of frequencies. Okay. So this is an important illustration, Nadine. You mentioned okay. filters. I've heard that TV stations believe use of filters will overcome the impairments. Is that true? Well, let's see that. Um, yeah, filters are your first line of defense. Uh, you can, you basically can take a filter from a manufacturer that is that might be recommended from your satellite operator, and you can then uh, you will need to assemble that and test that. But filters are designed for specific frequencies. They are not adequate to deal with harm, uh, harmonics, things like ASI sound spots, uh, FM signals. So you have to carefully select the filter vendor uh, with the help of your satellite provider and hope for the best. Uh, but experts do recommend you to be prepared for anything. So next, let me address the ASI. To those who don't understand what is an ASI, it's an adjacent satellite interference is the problem of other satellites being received by my dish that they are too uh, close together that I cannot distinguish between the two. This basically causes an interference and from time to time, I will not be able to interpret or process the video properly. This is something that creates a nuisance and as many satellites uh, are out there, they will uh, create more and more havoc in the air and the reception. So with more and more satellites being launched every day, how's the industry plan to address this? 
Ah, that's uh, that's the problem on uh, the table of many uh, satellite uh, users today. So let's uh, talk about some of them. So one option is to use the uh, backup link from another satellite, use two birds in the air. Other think about bundling geographically separated Earth stations so that if one is suffering, we will take the feed from another one. There is the advice to increase the transmission beam power. Other talk about increasing the, the diameter of the Earth station dishes. We touch base on the filters against rogue frequencies. There is a funny thing of preventing 5G equipment near Earth stations. But uh, just as a side note, usually a 5G installation means it's not only one tower, there are multiple towers in your area. So how can you uh, push them aside? Then there's the reduce of the content or the services are uh, going to higher uh, encryption, maybe uh, HEVC or LCEVC or other techniques that will narrow your uh, transport stream. Then there's the recommendation to monitor and register nearby interference sources on a daily basis so that you monitor that and you get a list and you report them, but at that time you're still getting an interference. Other recommend to use an a IP failover link. So if your satellite goes down, you will switch to a, a IP link to a feed you from a backup site or disaster recovery. And the last one, as I mentioned before, is to track and register interference and go and complain to the FCC or to the satellite, uh, pro to the 5G providers or others, if you can find them. So when we came and tackled this uh, problem, we wanted to have a solution that will augment satellite reliability with IP. That was on our mind. We basically sat down and asked ourselves, can we add a solution uh, that will uh, make the satellite great again? And the, que the first question that uh, my people asked, and although they are quite a believer, uh, what can we do? What, can we, what are the resources that are available to recover the satellite? And for that, the answer is quite simple. We have local fiber links at many air stations, receivers, we have broadcast connectivity if landline is not available, which is perfect for rural. Low cost internet is quite cheap and affordable. Download speeds can accommodate high bit rates. Internet over cable DSL broadband is also suitable for continuous operation. And the IP is a perfect companion for a non continuous recovery. But Adi, can we really trust the internet? Well, as uh, this slide show, this is from uh, NAB 2020 from the RIST uh, forum presentation that uh, showed an 86% packet loss recovery. Yesterday we had Sergio uh, Murata presenting uh, his Libris ability to recover 70% of packet loss on an uh, IP link. So I believe the internet is viable for that. And keep in mind that in this solution that I will explain, elaborate more later on, does not stream all the time, but rather streams only when needed as needed. So, sorry for that. So how do we increase transmission reliability? What we do is we have a satellite link that is up, but the video quality is declining <coughs> as a result of interference. What VideoFlow does is provides an add-on, out-of-band, non-intrusive packet recovery that overcomes any adjacent and co-interferences that might happen to the link. It does not add any bitrate to the satellite link. And it allows a 10% error recovery on the satellite receiver output to recover any packet that is being corrupted or lost in the transmission of the satellite. And this is a new approach. Okay, so let's demonstrate that. So this is a standard satellite uh, system. We have on the left, we have a source sending over UDP, RTP, ASI. 
In this example, we have two receivers and a satellite a bird. Oh. So to that, we add network element. We had one device, which is an origin device that will sit at the source and will uh, take the stream going up and send that to a recovery server that will sit in the cloud. It will create a secure tunnel, encrypted tunnel for and reliable video delivery to the cloud. At the cloud, we will have a recovery server that will store the incoming stream and it will process any request for data recovery from a variety of clients. It will not send the full stream, but only the recovery packets to the clients, which makes it much more effective and low overhead. The recovery client is the very sm is the smartest piece in this uh, uh, solution. It identifies the missing data. It requests the data from the recovery server and then it merges by way of splicing the data back to the original stream. So we have a continuous flawless output from the client. So let's see an illustration of that. Adia, are you saying that you are not using RIST or SRT in the clients for the recovery? Right. The clients themselves only ask for recovery for packets, so we don't need to send the entire stream to them, which is which will waste a lot of bandwidth and uh, might not be suitable for those areas that don't have enough bandwidth. But we do use uh, the link from the origin, from the modulator or from the transmission center to the cloud. There we use usually RIS or SRT or something of the sort. In this, let's see how it works. In this example, we see the top the right top receiver suffering from 10% packet loss. It then, the client on the right sees that, reports to the recovery server that he needs a recovery of 10% and those packets are being sent to that specific client. Other clients which are not effective, affected by the interference are not being overwhelmed with recovery packets that are not needed. So I'm still having kind of a hard time with this. Can you explain this in action, please? Well, I imagine you will ask that. So let's see. So this is for those who don't rec don't remember the splicing. Uh, we have on the bottom an original stream, flawless original stream. And on the satellite output, suddenly a piece is missing. The client will identify this problem, notify the original stream, the recovery server of this uh, missing piece that will be sent to it and it will be spliced in to the stream. So the output will be a fixed output without any artifacts. Let, let me share a short video to, to demonstrate that. Let's see how video flows rights can overcome these challenges. In a regular operation mode, a video transport stream will be packetized and stream to satellite and down to the received stations and further distribution. RISE offering includes software at the transmission station, a cloud server, and video flow software at the satellite receiving site or connected via any type of IP link or even internet. At the uplink station, the video stream will be transmitted simultaneously to the satellite and to the IP network cloud. A lighting interference emerged at the satellite uplink stream and damaged packet number. Video flow software platform gets its input from the receiver, automatically detects the specific damaged packet or packets, and sends a request to the IP network cloud for a package replacement. Once received, the video stream will be resynchronized and sent out smoothly. All of this done seamlessly and no effect of video. <laughs> okay, so I get it now, but how do you do full stream recovery? Well, that's a very good question. For that, we usually, we will add another component to this system. We basically drop in another server on the left, which would be a backup server. That server is, uh, will actually be transmitting using SRT or RIST to the client uh, to the, until the satellite comes back again. 
and provide the necessary good broadcast that it uh, usually will do, and the backup server will stop working. So this is really out of the box, and you're basically using IP to make the satellite stronger and uh, more effective to the satellite users. So if video flow systems hides the problem from the downstream devices while it's occurring, that's a really great result. Is this deployed now? No, this is right now in a POC stage. It is being tested in two, in, by two uh, TV stations uh, groups in the United States. We are doing uh, field trials and we are identifying problems and we're working to recover that. Uh, and uh, we hope to deploy that uh, in a quarter or two, um, being available to the public. Great. Okay. So what are the benefits basically? So the, ba the basic thing is that as we saw before, we don't touch the satellite uh, transmission. We don't have to change any element. It is not, it is not intrusive. There is no bitrate increase in the satellite link. And we provide seamless recovery of missing data link. And this is important because problems will still be there. We are not taking away the ASI, the 5G. If there is an interference, we will then tackle that problem, recover the, the stream and output a seamless feed. Think of it as a, like an Israeli iron dome and like a shield that we put uh, surrounding that station that will uh, take care of any interference and provide a seamless stream. It, we also provide the heatless changeover from satellite link to the IP link and vice versa when a backup occurs. We increase the operational efficiency because we cut the number of track rows there with secure in-band management for the remote side because we are connected over IP. We can monitor and report that to the satellite people. We increase the team collaboration, the mean time to repair and provide a confidence feed return and ETR stream monitoring for the satellite people that suddenly can vi visualize and see what is going on on the reception site. And that is it. I hope I made the time. Thank you very much. I will take questions if you have some. Adi, you did make the time and there are a couple of questions. Uh, what okay. is the extra delay introduced for this recovery approach? We, right now we plan to have like 300 uh, milliseconds of delay on the, on the receiving end. Okay, and this is a good question. It's something we talked about before. If the receiving device has a network path large enough to do 100% recovery, then why not just deliver the program signal over IP instead? Well, you can do that if you wish to do that. It will just cost you money. Uh, and uh, we, we are plan our goal was not to overload the network. Uh, we can pro you can use RIS, SRT, uh, video flow, Zigzee solution to bring content. But our idea was to, to boost the satellite efficiency. And when we are talking about rural America, we are talking places that don't have that great uh, connectivity. We don't want, we cannot overload that signal. Uh, I'll envision the use of uh, geo, for instance, uh, uh, for uh, the main broadcast, and then use a uh, Starlink Leo for the data recovery. Of course, that will uh, add some uh, more delay, but it, then it can be easily deployed in places that they don't have that uh, good internet or well, connectivity. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that, and we do have it a test client lined up for that in the near future, and it'll be exciting to talk about the results. So Adi, those are the questions that we have, and we are exactly on time for Mr. Gilmer. Well, Excellent. I love that. You guys make my job easy. <laughs> Adi, Paul, thank you so much.